Yo, what's up? Of course, it's Sample Kings. Please subscribe. You know, so the deal here is that, as you can see from my thumbnail, there are some things I don't like in the MPC2 software for some time now. And one of these things right now, to get to the point, is this thing right here. I click on this, and that MPC just bounces and bounces. It does not load. It's going to take a while to load. I've timed it out twice. One minute and 33 seconds or 32 seconds it will take to load and start off with my MPC software at, do I want to start with an empty project or demo or whatever? And so I don't like that. It takes too long. It's ridiculous. And if, even if I come to here and I go to right there, look at this. I can't use it on anything. That's kind of crazy. I can't do nothing. I have to sit around and wait. I bring my cursor back down here and do this. Now look, I am on a MacBook Pro. This is uh, less than, no, it's about a year old now. I have an M1 Max chip in here. It's ridiculously super fast, super smart machine. I have 64 gigabytes of RAM in here. I've got plenty to work with video and audio. This is a beast of a machine. But with the MPC, it's reduced the waiting for the software to act on it. I don't like that. So this bouncing up and down, I think most people have this happening. Even if I add in a bunch of plugins, maybe it causes that to happen even more, but it shouldn't happen. Now to get this comparison right, what I'm going to do here now, I'm going to load up their biggest competitor, Machina, or as I call it, Machine. And we'll open it right here. I got it here in my system. Here we go. Now you know I do a bunch of instructional videos on all these things. I know them all. It's no big deal. And so here... They open up quickly. Why can't the MPC2 do that? I do not know why. I'm not programming it. It's supposed to be a door. This is what a door does right here, right? Pretty simple stuff. I can open up the software. Pretty easy. Let's go back into here and not even touch it. Matter of fact, one thing I want to show you for sure too, even if I needed to use it again, I can load in any plugin I want. I can load in the VST3s, VST2s. You know, that's hot. Let's go on again. Let's quit this. Let's do one more thing. We're going to open up live. I got live here too. Here's live. I'm open up live right now. Now, once I open up live, we're going to see what happens when I open up live here. You'll notice that it loads quickly as well. I come right to here. I can get busy. It's pretty simple stuff to do. So next, what I'm going to do here is just get out of this one. And this is my pet peeve that I've not liked for some time now, is that I can't load the MPC software as fast as other DAWs. Now next, I may get some new apps, right? I got some new UAD apps. I wanna make sure they work. In order to do this, I have to go into here. I must say, take me to settings, which is actually preferences. I go here to plugins. I have to rescan. Rescanning will take me almost an hour. It's like 53 minutes and 45 seconds. What? It's got to rescan everything. And once it does rescanning of everything, then I could use that app. Until then, I can't do much. Now, that, I have no idea why that happens. Even if I have to rescan for some reason or any kind of reason at all, it still takes that long period of time to rescan. That is not necessary with my other software. So that too, I don't like. And I need to actually speed the rescanning up because I am on a MacBook Pro. That's an M1 maxed out machine that has 64, it's more than that. I think it's a ridiculous number. Matter of fact, let's check this out. Let's go to about this Mac right here. About this Mac, open it up. Where's it at? I don't even see it right here, right? So I need to go back into here. I need to probably hide this sucker. I'm going to go back in here about this Mac. Here it comes right my about this Mac. Look at this. 64 gigabytes of RAM, of memory right there. That's pretty cool. I'm running the top of the end stuff. Let's go to here. You will see that I have everything I need. Here's an Apple M1 Max chip. I've got everything in here to make the machine hum and run. I do not get why it can't do it. Now, another thing is that you cannot use the VST3 inside of your MPC2 software. I don't know why. Now, for example, I'll come here into the machine. I'll see VST3 right here. I can see the Air Music Technology. 
wait a minute, isn't that MPC stuff? Check that out. It's VST3 for this system. Peep that. I've got a Kai Flex Beat. That's what? VST3. So they have some things that are used to VST3. But I have a lot of apps here. Here's one. Tons of apps. All VST3. I could use these in my MPC software, but I can't. Now, the reason why this is so hot. Let's go back to here. Let me tell you what's going on with VST3s and why they're great. Now, here we go. We got this right here. And you will see right here. Let's open this up. Let's get a wider view of this thing so I can read it and you can see it. Perhaps, no, perhaps the biggest improvement of the VST3 plugin is that it doesn't waste CPU resources and only works when it detects the presence of an audio signal. I've got, let's say, this is a reverb. This is a vocal. She's not singing right now. When she starts to sing, boom. Then it starts to use the CPU power. This means we're saving. This is a good idea. MPC would be nice to have use of VST3s. That's all I'm saying. Now, as many of you might do, I like to load MIDI files. Look for some information I'm trying to get. So let's say, for example, I come to here. I want to see Boogie Reggae Woman right here, right? If I can click here, I get these options open with. I can open it with Logic. I can open it with GarageBand, Pro Tools, QuickTime, uh, Reason. I can't load it with MPC. Okay, I get that. Now, what I can do to, I can even pull up live. If you don't see live there, you don't even see that, but watch this. I'll pull up live real quickly. It'll load up fast. And then once it does, I'm ready to go. Now, here's my live thing. I'll get rid of this part right here. And let's say we're up here looking for, I want to load something in here. And I want to load in a MIDI file, right? So I'm looking through stuff here. How do we load some MIDI files here? I don't see it here, right? I'll come to live here. I come to edit here. And I'm looking for loading a MIDI file. Create. Import MIDI file right there. I can import MIDI files inside of live. Even though I don't see that, I can do that. We'll get back to it. We'll quit this anyway. Be quick to load it back up. I can do this quick. I can come to here. But I can't do it MPC. For MPC, I've got to actually drag this in. I don't want to do that. I want to come and say, okay, bam. Let's hit this button right here. Let's And look, it loads. This is quick. There's the MIDI file. I see all the tracks. It tells me what's here. The tracks have been designated to what they're going to be. I can see what's what. Oh, well, this is this is that. This is this. What is this thing here? I come to here. I'll say, well, click this and play this. And I'll see this thing play, and I get, get an idea instantly what the hell it is. Let's go to here. Okay, we know what that is. Obviously, it loads quickly. Now, if I go back, and let's say this closes this process. Matter of fact, forget this. Logic's full easy to work with. So we're going to go back to MPC. Right, I get to here. I have to take this project out of here. I have to take this MIDI file. How you doing? Boogie on Reggae Woman. I'm going to drag this right here into here. I drag it in. It's going to do its thing. Okay. And I go drag it out to here. And then what? It gives me this is the time. I don't believe that. So to see, I don't see all the tracks. And now where are all the tracks at? So where are all the tracks? So the tracks are right there. You can see them now. And these are all the tracks right here. But I think labeled with a specific sound to go for. This is this kind of sound. This is a keyboard sound. You know, MIDI information, when people make up MIDI tracks, they designate certain tracks for certain sounds or whatever. And my last peeve is going to be more or less about having inserts inside a track i prefer to have at least five or eight inserts really in the, in the track and the problem ends up being of course compensation for the delay that happens as these effects affect every sound in the track so for example i'm going to play back something here now what i'm going to play back here this sound right here let's go to this track right here i'm going to turn this stuff off i got stuff here turn this stuff off and you have some loop right there right Let's turn overall master output louder. That's my loop. I've got effects here. I had a compressor on this loop. 
I'm going to add this transient. I'm sort of cutting out other sounds here. I want to add a parametric EQ. Okay, now I want to put a noise gate in there. I want to cut out some other frequencies that are happening there. Because I only want the kick and snare. But I have other ideas. I want to maybe make a little more bass come out. I may want to separate one through a separate output channel, right? So I can't do that because right here, I only have four available inserts. I prefer to have more inserts. And by this point, as you've probably seen in other softwares, there are just a lot of inserts, particularly machine. And they have the ability to create this delay compensation effect where as many inserts as I keep adding, I does not delay the overall sound with the rest of the tracks that don't have these effects. Otherwise, MPC is cool. But I would prefer these five features to be upgraded. What can I tell you?